everybody, welcome to Quaggy Storytime. It's me, Halo the Hippo. And today I'm reading a story called Wake Up Santa Claus. This book is about how Santa Claus nearly doesn't get Christmas done. Oh, I'm really worried. Let's read it and find out. Wake Up Santa Claus by Marcus Vista. One winter's day, the forest lay peacefully sleeping under a thick blanket of snow. An old wooden house stood in a small clearing. Nothing but the contented sound of snoring drifted outside. Someone was asleep, nestled deep in the warm feather bed. Only the lump under the covers and the tip of his nightcap showed that he was there. <gasps> I wonder who it is. Do you think you know who it is? It was Santa Claus. Slowly he turned and poked his nose above the covers. He blinked and yawned and glanced at the clock on his bedside table. Then he sat up with a start. How could he have slept through the alarm clock on today of all days? He'd really have to rush to deliver the children's presents on time. He jumped out of bed and ran to find his clothes. Trousers, jacket, hat. Where was his hat? On his head, of course. Now for his boots. He found one under the bed. Good. But where was the other? On top of the cupboard? Behind the door? In the chest? He looked under the bed again. The boot had vanished. At last he saw the shiny black toe peeking out from under the curtain. There you are, he said to the boot. Stop laughing at me. I'm late. And he ran for the door. But when he pulled it open, he was trapped by a wall of snow as high as his chin. With a groan, he picked up his shovel and dug his way through the heavy snow. Slowly, he cleared a path across the garden, through the gate and out to the stable. He leaned against the door to catch his breath. Phew, I've done it, he said thankfully. But it had taken hours, hours that he didn't have. Santa Claus opened the stable doors and greeted his reindeers. They were warm and wanted to stay in their stall, so he had to coax them out one by one. Quickly he buckled up their harnesses, pushed the sleigh out into the snow and hitched up the reindeer. Then he swung into the seat, took up the reins and stopped. He had a funny feeling he had forgotten something. He looked over his shoulder. The sleigh was empty. What could he have forgotten, do you think? It was the sack, he cried. I nearly forgot the presents. He ran back into the house and found the sack leaning against the fireplace in his living room. Santa dragged it over to the door, but no matter how he pushed and shoved and dragged and tugged, the sack wouldn't fit through the door. There was nothing else to do. He would have to put all the presents into smaller sacks. He raced to the cellar and found three sacks. Then he began to unpack all the presents. Apples, nuts and oranges rolled all over the floor. Santa Claus had to scramble to gather them up and stuff them in the sacks. Finally, he was finished. Out of breath, he loaded the sacks into the sleigh and jumped up on his seat. Ready at last, my friends, off we go! But the reindeer wouldn't budge. They stamped their feet and snorted. Oh, of course. What was I thinking, said Santa Claus. I was in such a hurry I forgot to feed you. How could you ever go such a distance on empty stomachs? Quickly, he brought out two big bales of hay and two buckets of water. Slowly and steadily, the reindeer began to eat. It was getting cold and more snow was beginning to fall. Santa Claus hopped impatiently from foot to foot. Finally, the reindeer had eaten their fill. For the third time, Santa Claus climbed up on his sleigh. Hey ho, off we go, he cried. The reindeer pulled with all their might. They leaned into the harness and strained with their legs, but the sleigh seemed to be stuck on the ground. Suddenly, it moved forward with a jerk, slipped a few feet then stuck again. Santa Claus got down and wiped the snow from the runners. 
the fine smooth blades that he kept polished so carefully all year were suddenly cracked and covered with rust. No wonder the sleigh was stuck. Santa Claus was close to tears. What a nightmare, he cried. We'll never make it, even if I push. But push he did, and when that didn't work, he pulled. The snow fell faster and thicker, and soon he couldn't even see the sleigh. He knew the reindeer were struggling with him. He felt their warm breath. But when the track disappeared in the blowing snow, he had no idea where to go. Sick at heart, he followed the harness back to the sleigh and climbed in. The reindeer couldn't move forwards or backwards. They were stuck, chest deep in the heavy snow. It was hopeless. Then, from off in the distance, he heard the soft ringing of bells. The sound grew nearer and nearer, louder and louder, until Santa Claus woke up. He sat up and turned off the alarm clock. It was really only a dream. He hopped out of bed and quickly got dressed. His two boots stood neatly under the chair, just where he had left them. Cautiously, he opened the door to look outside. The path to the stable was clear of snow. He ran out to check on the reindeer. They were happily eating hay from their mangers and the runners on the sleigh were polished like mirrors. Santa Claus jumped for joy. He ran back to the house. The presents were stuffed in the sack, but it wasn't too big to fit through the doorway. He loaded it into the sleigh and harnessed up the reindeer. Without a backwards glance, Santa Claus shouted, Hey ho, off we go! And the sleigh slipped like a snowflake across the open trail. Then there was a surge of speed. The reindeer bounded into the air and the sleigh rose gently up and up and disappeared into the cool moonlit sky.